So a few months ago, I came across this article titled A Lingering Gettysburg Battle. Where did Lincoln actually stand? Which was all about this new evidence that was supposed to reveal where Lincoln actually stood when he gave the Gettysburg Address. And I was intrigued by this article because this is the Gettysburg Address. It's one of the most famous speeches in history given by one of the most famous people in history. Surely we know where said person was when he gave said speech, right? Wrong, kind of. Turns out there's a lot we don't know about where Abraham Lincoln actually gave the Gettysburg Address, and I've come to Gettysburg National Military Park to try and figure it all out. I suppose a good place to start for this story is, why was there a Gettysburg Address at all? Well, just four months before it was given, the bloodiest battle of the American Civil War took place here. Over the course of three days, July 1st through 3rd, 1863, the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia, led by Robert E. Lee, squared off with the Union Army of the Potomac, led by General George Meade. The fighting was bloody, it was brutal, it was violent. Gettysburg is considered the single bloodiest battle of the American Civil War. If you want to learn more about the battle itself, like its military significance and history, then there are some great videos here on YouTube, which I will link in the description below. But for our purposes here, what you need to know is that when all was said and done here at Gettysburg, more than 50,000 soldiers lie dead, captured, or wounded. In the wake of all this death and destruction, it quickly became apparent that a purely local effort would simply not be enough to deal with all of the burials. Burial efforts had been attempted, but some soldiers were only partially buried, or not buried at all, and it was just too much for such a small town to handle by itself. And so, a local lawyer named David Wills, who was overseeing some of the burial efforts, decided that a central burial location would be more appropriate, and that the burial efforts should be more symbolic of what happened here. Wills found a location on Cemetery Hill, which he thought would make a suitable location for a well-manicured ceremonial cemetery. A good chunk of the battle had taken place here, and Wills thought it would make a fitting location for those who lost their lives to be laid to rest. He encouraged the state of Pennsylvania to buy the land and encouraged the other 17 Union states whose soldiers died here to donate funds as well. Everything is agreed, the land is bought, and the cemetery was laid out, pretty much in its present day arrangement. Reburials began on October 27, 1863, nearly four months after the Battle of Gettysburg. The stage was now set for the Gettysburg Address because the Gettysburg Address was actually part of the dedication ceremony for the Gettysburg National Cemetery, which was known as the Soldiers National Cemetery at the time. So all of the dignitaries are in town, representatives from the various states, Abraham Lincoln is of course here, but the main speaker was actually a guy named Edward Everett. He was one of the most famous orators of the era, and he was the main attraction, the one whose words were to be most prominent and were to memorialize the occasion. Lincoln was just here to provide, according to the man who invited him, quote unquote, a few appropriate remarks. Well, Everett gets up to give his speech and he talks for two hours. By all accounts, it was a magnificent speech. Again, one of the best orators of the era. 
But then Lincoln gets up to give his appropriate remarks, which he does in all of two minutes. Ten sentences, 272 words. He gives one of the greatest speeches in history, even if people didn't realize it at the time. Everett did. He said, quote, I should be glad if I could flatter myself that I came as near to the central idea of the occasion in two hours as you did in two minutes, end quote. But the popular reaction to this speech wasn't really much of anything. It wasn't until we got the benefit of history that we started to realize just how truly incredible the Gettysburg Address was, and why Lincoln's two-minute speech is remembered way more than Edwards' two-hour one. It's because Lincoln didn't just give appropriate remarks to dedicate the cemetery. He reframed the entire Battle of Gettysburg and the Civil War as a fight for freedom and into slavery and an upholding of the values that were espoused in the Declaration of Independence. In the entirety of this two-minute speech, Lincoln reframes this entire conflict, the Civil War, as a fight for freedom in America, which is why it's considered one of the greatest speeches in history. And yet we still don't know where he was when he gave it, but we have some ideas. This is the Gettysburg Rostrum. Five separate presidents have spoken here since Lincoln's visit. Teddy Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, and Franklin Roosevelt. An article in 1908 from the New York Times about a Memorial Day service here even wrote that, quote, Senator Knox spoke from the famous rostrum built on the location where President Lincoln delivered his Gettysburg Address in 1863. But Lincoln never spoke here. What about here? This is the Lincoln Address Memorial, and it was dedicated in 1912 to commemorate the Gettysburg Address. There's a bust of Lincoln, and the Gettysburg Address is in these beautiful engravings to the side of him. So maybe the speech took place here? Except when we look at this sign, it says the address was delivered about 300 yards from this spot along the Upper Cemetery Drive. The site is now marked by the Soldiers National Monument. Well, that's no matter. The Soldiers National Monument is right over there. We can walk to it pretty easily, and we can finally check out the spot where Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. Ah, here we go. Kentucky honors her son, Abraham Lincoln, who delivered his immortal address at the site now marked by the Soldier's Monument. Great. Yeah, no, this is not where Abraham Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. For a long time, this is where we thought he gave the Gettysburg Address. This monument was actually supposed to be placed at the location where he gave the address. But the cornerstone for this monument was laid in 1865 two years after Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. Sometime in those intervening two years, the actual location of the speaker's platform was lost. This monument was instead placed on the location of a flagpole that stood on the battlefield, a flagpole that is clearly visible in this photograph. This photograph, and several others like it, hold the answers to helping us finally unlock the secret of where Abraham Lincoln stood during the Gettysburg Address, or at least they help us get as close as we can to unlocking that secret. Because they're photographic evidence, not somebody's eyewitness account or recollection, which can sometimes be misleading, but actual photographic evidence of where Lincoln stood. These photos provide landmark structures and, crucially, the angles from which they were taken that experts can basically use to triangulate the location of where the speaker's platform, and thus, Abraham Lincoln was standing when he gave the Gettysburg Address. Here's the thing, though. There aren't a lot of photos of the Gettysburg Address, and so while they're some of the best resources we have, they're still not perfect. And so, since around 1995, this has been the generally accepted location of where Abraham Lincoln gave the Gettysburg 
address. Well, technically it's just over this fence here behind me in another cemetery, the Evergreen Cemetery, which is privately owned and not part of the National Cemetery or the Gettysburg National Military Park. The location isn't even marked, but back then, Lincoln's time, this fence wasn't here. This was a battlefield and this whole cemetery was still being developed. Still, this has been, again, the generally accepted location of where Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address for nearly 30 years. A historian by the name of William Frasinito used the known photographs of Gettysburg and the landmarks within them and that triangulation method to come up with this location. There was the flagpole, there was the gatehouse to the Evergreen Cemetery. You could see Culp's Hill in the background. There was a tent somewhere on the battlefield. He used all of these to come up with his location. And again, this was photographic evidence. It took some detective work, yeah, but this was the most sophisticated and up-to-date analysis on the location of the Gettysburg Address to date. Until last year. Last year, a professor by the name of Christopher Oakley upped the ante by not only using photographic evidence, but 3D animation software and detailed terrain modeling to place the location of where Lincoln stood for the Gettysburg Address right here. You can see it's not actually that far from the last location, maybe like 100 feet, but crucially, this new technique placed Lincoln actually inside what is today the National Cemetery when he spoke. Now, technically in this model, the speaker's platform, if it stood today, it would actually straddle this fence here, be located in both cemeteries. But the location where the speakers actually stood and thus where Lincoln was standing when he gave the Gettysburg Address was located here within the Gettysburg National Cemetery. Now, this research is still very new. Those in the Lincoln and Civil War history communities will still have to look at it, agree or disagree with its findings, scrutinize it, and so on. But for right now, this is the new most advanced, most sophisticated technique for finding out exactly where Abraham Lincoln stood when he gave the Gettysburg Address. Right here between these two bushes. All right, now it's at this point you're probably wondering why I came all the way up to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, did all this research, dived into the psyche of Lincoln superfans, only to end up sitting between two trees next to a fence. Like, what's the significance here? Why is it important? Why is it so important that we know exactly where Abraham Lincoln stood when he gave the Gettysburg Address. And I could go on and on about the importance of historic preservation, archival analysis, accurate record keeping, historical photography, the significance of the Battle of Gettysburg in the Civil War, the significance of Lincoln and his presidency and the speech, etc., etc. But instead, I will leave you with this quote from Christopher Gwynn, a ranger here at Gettysburg National Military Park. He says, Quote, when visitors come, they want to stand in the spot where Lincoln stood. It takes him from being that marble god at the memorial in Washington, D.C., and makes him flesh and blood. Okay, welcome back. Thank you for joining me at Gettysburg. Uh, that was a really fun one to make, to travel up to Gettysburg uh, and to go and produce that story. Uh, I knew as soon as I saw that article that I wanted to do a story there because it's just, again, so fascinating that we don't know where Abraham Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. Like, how could that be? It's crazy to me. Um, and so, yeah, it was a great time diving in to do all the research for that episode. Um, the Lincoln super fans out there, they were indispensable in producing that video, the research that they do and uh, the conferences they hold and the people who devote their lives to this sort of a thing. Uh, they were very helpful in, in, in making that episode. So huge shout out to them. So yeah, that was a fun one to make. Um, this has been National Park Diaries. Again, uh, if you like stories from the world's protected places, that's my whole thing. So I tell educational stories about national parks, public lands, protected areas. Uh, Gettysburg, of course, is a national military park within the national park system. Uh, so I was happy to cover that story up there from Gettysburg. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want more stuff like that, more, more videos like that. Um, and I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons as well, because again, this was an episode from the field uh, and normally I'm here in the studio, right? And so going out into the field is more involved, more logistics, more money, more everything. Um, and I really like doing those videos because they're more energetic and fun and dynamic and I can like reflect on the parks while I'm there and just like really try and convey the experience that I'm having to you guys here on YouTube. Um, and so 
the support that my patrons give me to be able to do that, to be able to go and travel and make these videos uh, is indispensable. And so if you would like to support me on Patreon uh, to be able to help me go and travel and make more videos like this and make the ones here in the studio as well, uh, every little bit helps and I am incredibly grateful to any support you can give me whether that's through subscribing and watching this video, that helps tremendously, or whether it's direct support on Patreon, uh, it all helps me just in this endeavor that I have to help people learn about and understand national parks. So I'm incredibly grateful for your support. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.